Wheely Howie, your brother is a uh, welcome to <laughs> Extra Time with SAFC Fan See, that's what I wanted to do. Uh, with SAFC Fan TV, we are freshly back following an amazing win down at QPR. Today, uh, we've got Wayne, your, 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 I don't know, I haven't done this in a while, so you see how rusty I am, you're with us, yeah, you just here, you know. Yes, I'm with you, I'm with you, I'm with you, how are you? You're with us. I'm not too bad, mate, you had a, had a good day, you all right? Happy days, I was happy when we were in me, so I was a happy Saturday when we get three points. Ah. Mike, you're, you're joining us as well tonight, uh, or Bulldog as we should call you, or Mystic Mike maybe with your predictions <laughs> from the there other day. There we go, day. there we go. <laughs> You've got it straight in, so how are you doing, you been all right today? Yeah, yeah, good, good. Yeah, let's uh, let's not set that benchmark though. I, I'll predict a high score every time, even when we're losing. So <laughs> I, know. I haven't gone back yet to check how you said for Rotherham or you know. Uh, yeah, yeah, you know, said on there. Let's, let's so, not talk about this. Yeah, next so just move on. on. It's a flash in the pan. We'll, we'll call it a one-on-one -on -one type thing. So uh, we'll just go. <laughs> so I mean, while we're while we're just sort of quickly having a lovely evening's chat about today's game. Um, I have to say, it was, a, it was a bit of a feisty one at the start, lads. I don't know what you th thought, Wayne. Uh, yeah, I thought the the referee was a lot to do with that in mind. I thought the referee was shopping you know, the, mm. the first the first half. And then the, the only thing he got right was, was called back sending off. Everything else, he yeah. was just an absolute farce. He was absolutely terrible. He was missing fouls for both sides. And uh, I terrible. I think he was, it must have been like he thought, oh, I'll, I'll let the game go on. And then he let, I don't know which one it was first. Um, Oh, when they shoved um, Ballard over, and I was yeah. like, "That you've just shoulder barged him off the ball, like that's that's a foul." And then they got one, and that led to their goal. And then they shoved Huggins in the advertising board. Then yeah. they pole axe oh nine. It was like I was, sitting, I was messaging the group chat, just going, "What's he doing?" This is three of them. <laughs> and I was literally typing, watch us do a foul and get sent off as I looked up to see the ginger ninja that is Jack Colback. Do you like, know what? I was snapping I was somebody. <laughs> I was typing the exact same thing. I was just seeing what next, the next foul one of our players will get booed. Just here watching, just as I, just as I, like, you know, just as I was typing. I was like, oh, never mind. And I saw well, us I, all running over. Oh, go on, Mike, sir. I think the ref forced himself into that decision. I think um, if nothing else had happened before, that might not have been a red card. That might have if been did, yeah. a stern if telling it, off a yellow was... card. But the fact that all nine's in his face going three times already, you know, he, every, everyone could see how badly he was doing the ref. Uh, he must have known I, himself. I think Hume must have broke the record for like the fastest sprint of his life that I saw. Because <laughs> when the camera was out, you just saw him just go, <laughs> like straight over. It was like, that's my mate you're doing there. Like, honestly, I've never seen some of these players run so fast just to go. But literally, you were right. All of them were like three times, three times this has happened now. And yeah. like you say, if he'd have given a yellow or a foul on any of the other ones, he might not have given that. He might not have been pressurised into it. But I think he thought, oh, I've stuffed Look, myself here. Like, I can't do yeah. anything else, can I? <laughs> I, I thought he'd forgot his cards back in the locker room. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, it was a bad time. I mean, we're lucky Joe yeah. never got a really bad injury. No. But just, just going slightly on a tangent, how bad were Gareth with boots? Did you see them? Oh, God. Gareth Ainsworth's <laughs> wardrobe's just terrible. Man, like. Crotondale, Crotondale done, didn't he, wasn't he? I'm sure. I don't know if any of you have watched that under the cosh when they do like their their match day vlogs and stuff. They did that, obviously the Wembley final that he was in against us, and half their time they were just like, "Is it a brogue or is it some sort of like he's wearing cowboy boots with chinos? Like what's what's he doing?" Just I'm, just, I'm just really glad he never became our manager. That's oh. that's the sort of level of it. Um, although I'm going to skip quite far ahead here. I did love, right as they were waiting for the final whistle, I could just hear the Sunderland fans on my stream just going, uh, Gareth Ainsworth, your football is shite. And it was just <laughs> like, oh, that's just so <laughs> beautiful. Like This is exactly what I wanted. Just this this man that was sort of like, he shouldn't be above League One. It's just thuggish football like from minute one. And it was just like, oh, it's just it was just beautiful. Beautiful well, that, moment. That, um, comes from, that comes from his WWE background, doesn't it? Like we're putting the chat earlier on, he's Shawn Michaels in disguise. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah, that yeah, that, yeah, that the... picture of him on that pre-game interview, it, I just it? I had to double take. I thought it was like some old wrestling stuff coming up on my feed, genuinely. He looks he like does, Shawn Michaels. He does sort of dress like one, doesn't he? He's got the shirt sort yeah. of open, <laughs> up, like his chest out, <laughs> strutting about, and you're a bit like, what? 
I'm going to, I'm going to send an email to QPR and say if they'd want to do the same team entrance music as Shawn Michaels comes into, that would be good for them. <laughs> I mean, you never know. It might give them some sort of spur on to actually win a game once in a while. You never know. <laughs> um, he won't be here long anyway, so it's fine. Um, slipping to more depressing sort of things. Yeah. Do you think Equa's injury is bad, Mike? Are you hoping not? I don't think it's going to be major because of how much he got up and played on. If he'd have gone straight mm. off, yes, I'd be worried. But I'm I'm thinking strain, possibly bruising, maybe a week or two at the most. I'm Just like touch, impact. Touch wood, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Because I don't think he'd have played on as much as he did. Yeah, you make and a good I'd, point. He did go on He probably while, could he? have carried on, but I don't think he's the type of player that doesn't want to unless he's 100%. Because he wants to make yeah. an impact each time. So I don't I think he'd want him. I don't know if you've heard Tony Mowbray's press comments, but after the game, apparently he's going to be fit for Wednesday. Apparently he's been playing with a dead leg, and that he took a knock on it, and that's why they brought him off. But he said he's going to be fit for Wednesday. But you know, would you risk him? I mean, for me, Pritchard. Yeah, you don't want him out for a while. I mean, yeah, like you say, Pritchard was class when he came on, and because I, I thought the same as you, I thought, oh no, we've lost our like shield in front of the defence, and Bellingham's going to have to drop back, which he's more than capable of doing. But it was just like, oh, then what have we lost up front? And it was just. Nothing changed. If anything, we actually pressed better. forward more. Like it was, it seemed to sort of click even better, which is great. We've got that option off the bench that we don't have to replace like for like. We can go. Actually, let's just switch this a bit. Let's switch yeah. this up a little bit, and it seemed to cause them problems. Towards um, the end of the game, Bellingham may have been as well being a striker. He was up there yeah. more than anyone else. He did that. Uh, was it against? Was it Rotherham? <laughs> or, no, it wasn't Rotherham. It, it was either Ipswich. Or the preseason game before, I think he was playing up front anyway, wasn't he? Or pretty much like the the, yeah. the focal point of the of the sort of midfield at least. He, um, I will say, as you probably saw in the group chat, I was raging because we got a replay. His goal wasn't offside. No, I mean they did show you from the halfway line, but you could clearly right. see he's in line with him. So yeah. like, if it is, it's tight. So whatever happened to benefit of the doubt for the for the attacker? I mean that one, he's just guessed and gone. No, it's offside. Yes. And, but then five minutes later, he did fluff a sitter. That he should have had yeah. as well. So yeah. he's got a long way to go if he wants to be better than Jude. But hey, oh, <laughs> we'll have them both in a few seasons when we're up in the Premier League. Anyway. So I was when Owen was messaging us before. There was that many for man of the match. I don't know. I don't know what you thought. How many could you have named on, today? On on my on my review video, I was a preacher. I thought when he came on. He just wants to get on the ball, and he's done it so many times this season. He's he's come on, and he, he just seems to dominate the game, and he, he he makes things happen. So, but there's, like you said, there were so many. You know, Clark had a, a better second half. First half, he was in. Abdullah Bar was fantastic second half. First half, he struggled getting the game, but I thought for me, Pritchard was absolutely amazing. Like I thought he really, really did well when he came on and proper state the claim to play on Wednesday. Mike, yeah. I, I I think Pritchard did well. I'm a fan of Pritchard. Um, I was not Dak, though. I, not Dak, <laughs> no. <laughs> They're two different levels know. in my book. Why on the Dak thing? I mean, don't get me wrong. I haven't seen a lot of him to make a, a full opinion. But why? <laughs> I don't dislike the guy. It's just he, like looks, the he, he just looks um, nervous on the ball. And for a player that's supposed to have come in as an easy signing, who's very experienced, he doesn't sell that to me. It might be a case of time. It might be time. But in that Southampton game, he g- gave away potentially two penalties if the ref had seen it. He did, you yeah. Know, actually, he's, yeah. He's a liability. I and I like a player like Catamol who will go in for a tackle. I love a player like that. But you've got to be smart with it as well. So, mm. it, I mean, the jury's out still. I just didn't like him at the time. <laughs> yeah, you just didn't like him at the time. That one yeah. video that you put yeah. out. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah right. Basically, double down on it, right? Okay. Well, so next uh, week, you'll be sitting there going, really good. This is my team uh, prediction for this uh, one. Uh, but I can't stand Sirkin. He cut us off at a roundabout <laughs> the other week. You know? I just can't stand him. He's, he's in the armpit again. I think it's because I expected so much because everyone's like, oh, it's, it's an experienced player coming in. It's an experienced player coming in. And he played with less confidence than the youth is coming in playing with. He looked like he didn't belong. So, maybe, do, you maybe, maybe that, time. do you not think that's down to the injury what he's had, though? I mean, if, I don't know if it was being me, if I had that type of bad injury, you'd be terrified to go in for a tackle, wouldn't you, in case it went again? Well, you, can't, that, you can't play players like that, then. I'm sorry, yeah, you, 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 you can't. It's difficult. On the, other, on the other side of it, because we've done so well with the youngsters coming in, we've given them that trust, we've given them that confidence and that sort of ability to go on and 
we trust you and they thrive on it. Bradley Dack isn't one of those. He's been playing for years anyway. So maybe he's still got that thing of, right, I've got to establish myself in this team. I've got a, hmm. a bit of nerves about it. Do you know, like you say, if he's not playing with confidence, it's got to be a bit of nerves or something. Whereas the other ones are just like, this is my chance. I've got to go. A bit like we were talking about um, Hamir. It's just, you're sort of sitting there going like, if you score, I think you'll be all right. And then today... He no one. one where he's offside and he tried to assist it to someone and then he had a free header at the back post and he was just like, just head it down, man. Just head it down. <laughs> like, not at the goalie. You are everywhere else. Just fumble it. I don't even care if you handball it and the ref doesn't see it. Just <laughs> get it in the net, man. Just something that's it's too... I don't want to say sitters because they're not, but clear-cut chances you've had in yeah. the last two games and you've put neither of them away. Whereas... Yeah. And one of them... He scored for fun in pre-season. Every game was a header for him. So, well, just been yeah. saying, like, mate, I think it's just confidence. I think once he gets one, because you can see he's a decent player. You know, I think mm. it's just a confidence thing with him. And I think once he gets one, we'll we'll be right. But it's it's game time. You know, Burstow today was in ahead of him, and then when we made a sub, he didn't bring him on either, did he? You know? But did we see much of Burstow today? I know he was physical and getting involved, but I saw more of Job up front than I saw. Of Burstow. I think Job did a better job of uh, playing, not like a false nine, because you can't play a false nine when you have a striker on, but like playing off of him. So I think yeah. Burstow seemed to take a lot of the, the attention, and that's why Job was getting these free spaces, as it were, in, especially in the first half. Second half, I don't remember seeing him that much. And then no. I think Mowbray went right. Well, he took off Huggins for Roberts, so he switched up a bit of the back line as well um, to give us more on the right-hand side. And then it was um when he took worst of it, he he took, out, 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 out. Yeah. And it Dave. was that thing of like, right, we're gonna play more midfields like we do normally, no focal point. <laughs> Dave, yeah, Dave came on. <laughs> and I think the commentators even said a sheaf, and I was like, Oh, cool, at least I know how to say it, Dave. <laughs> <laughs> Just, yeah. Uh, although I, I don't know if you were watching the same stream as me, the commentators that were clearly from QPR, which is Normally, not a problem. I like to think when I watch the Sunder ones, uh, Frankie and Danny are pretty level-headed. Like they might celebrate when we score. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And sort of go, "Get in, that's the one." But if Southampton had scored, they'd have been like, "Oh, well-worked goal or great pressing <laughs> or this, that, and the other." But like when we equalised, they were just like, "Oh, that is so undeserved." They <laughs> they have been poor in this, and that's definitely not a red card. And you're just sitting there going. Like, come, like, tone it down a bit. Like, 50, can I ask 50. a question? Can I ask a question? Are you watching a different one? I watched the um, Sunderland one, but if you watched a different one, were they saying Orneen? Orneen. Call him Orneen no, instead of Orneen. They did say on. They did say on nine. I, I remember because oh, they oh, they referred oh. to him when he. So this was. I almost turned the, the stream back. off. <laughs> <laughs> when they so just before the callback one, when O'Nine got poleaxed over, they did refer to him by his proper name, but they they did also preference it was saying. Well, he's a bit of a player like that himself. You know, he kissed someone last season and jumped on <laughs> someone's back. And it's like, oh, yeah, that justifies just being shoulder barged off the ball. Like, <laughs> just because he's a shit house last year, I'll be a shit house today. Yeah, that's that's how it works. All right, then. Um, yeah, I wasn't a it's, fan of the, the commentators. Some of them companies are really funny when you listen to the, like, how biased they are. I mean, yeah. you know, it's. I mean, I the, we've done streams and I, I know we're biased. But I don't think we're that bad. Like, we might, like, I, this I, this memory lives with me forever, and I don't want to bring it up. So, you remember when we lost to Newcastle 5-1? Yeah. Lives with me. I was sat in the no, pub. Blacked out. No, good. Well done. Um, <laughs> and we were, I don't know, it was like probably like 1 or 2 nil at the time. And somewhere, someone did a tackle on our play, and the, the commentator went, oh, he clearly got the ball. And in the middle of the pub, because I was young, I shouted, did he fuck? <laughs> this is like a neutral pub. So, so like, and it was really loud. And then they showed this clear as day replay where he did get the ball, <laughs> and it was just literally like this wall of black and white. Went, <laughs> and it was just like, but I sat there and went, "Yeah, all right, fair play." Like, I can't argue. I'm not going to double down on this. Like, yeah, all right. At least I admitted you were wrong. But yeah, but that if was I, they did it. The mug. I'd been a mug. The one who admitted it. Well, it, it Hume at the end of the was it either the end of the second half or towards the end where someone sat on him and then they flipped over each other. The commentator just went, "He stamped on him. He's on the floor. <laughs> he hadn't even got, he hadn't even got up." It was just, yeah, it wasn't a fan of the commentators. That, if, that if reminds me of when Sky used to do the fan commentary. You could turn yeah. it on a red button, 
Do you remember that? that. Yeah, and it yeah. was always one from each. That was hilarious sometimes. But that was funny watching the two of them just sort of like try and be mates for like 90 minutes when they clearly oh, yeah. hate each other. The, Ma- the Manchester Derby. I, I, that's <laughs> the fans one. I'll always remember the Manchester Derby. They were just It just turned into slagging each other off. The producers must have just been sat there going... Of <laughs> yeah, can't say this. I remember, I still do this to this day. Um, when we were playing Newcastle, it was the one where we were 2-1, the Richardson free kick. So we scored first. Our guy celebrated quite in his face, as you do. And as he's in the middle of celebrating, going, yeah, bro, the guy just goes, it's offside. And like, he turned, <laughs> the guy turns around to panic and he just laughs at him. It wasn't offside, but it was just to make himself feel better. I still do that now because it lives with me just to try and sort of mess with someone just that little second. Just go, stop laughing at me. Ah, it doesn't count. You know, some of that. <laughs> yeah. the, um, That's it. You well, can't do that anymore in the in the Premier League because half the time it, it be. will be called. <laughs> it might be. And a friend of mine who supports Arsenal. I think I might mention him last week. We were at the pub watching United um, Arsenal, and he just refused to celebrate any goal. He was just like, <laughs> it's like when anyone, yeah, I'm waiting. I'm not. I'm not I'm celebrating. Really Someone's yeah. on the floor, so they'll probably it's, give a reason against it. It's horrible, isn't it? It is genuinely. It, is. it ruins a bit of the atmosphere. It's, I mean, I know it's. You would be all right with it if they were right half the time, but most <laughs> of the time they're not right on it, and I just. But that's the other side of it, that today, Job's goal would have stood. Yeah. yeah. And we would have been 1-1 earlier and probably less panicked and, and that. But you're sitting there now going, at least in our league, is it a better thing that we just go, if the referee or the linesman's wrong, they're wrong. And that's the rule. Like That's that's just it. There's not what you can do. The ref said no. Move on. Well, there's always been that human error in football and we seem to be mm. trying to get rid of it, which With might With more computerised human error. Yeah, <laughs> I've, I've seen it now seven times. I'm still wrong. Stick with your decision, you know, that type of thing. Clear and obvious. I mean, would Colbach's red card have been overturned by what I did? No, I don't think so. Like, his studs were showing he was over the ball. Like, it would have been one of those that I think if he'd have given a yellow, they wouldn't have said, No, you're wrong. But if they'd have said the other way, they're probably going to yeah. say, No, it's just, mm-hmm. it, I mean, it should have been a red in my, in my eyes, and it yeah, might be biased. Probably- and because I hate him. But it just, it was a red card. And it really helped the fact that they were 1 0 up. And it was a bit like, uh, not that they were on top of us, but it just helped us get a little bit of a foothold back in the game, I think, just to be like, right, we've got a bit of extra space. This will help us play. And yeah. So here we go. The obviously great win. I think we're up to seventh now. Point seventh, off the yeah. Top yeah. Six. So good start. Um, when you look back at some of our results now, you sort of go, okay, Ipswich. They're up there with us, I think, or maybe I, I can't quite remember where they are, but they're up and about. So you're sitting there going, yeah. okay, at least they didn't just beat us and then lost six, you know, and just gone from yeah. there. Preston, I think, are top oh. with uh, they've not lost a game yet. I think they've won five, it's drawn one. Them, right? so. Yeah, well, yeah, Preston top, then Leicester, Ipswich, Norwich, Hull, Birmingham, then us. So the two we've dropped points to are actually decent at least so far in in the season i don't know if that justifies any of our well our i think play. i think we've mentioned on a previous video that we could have easily took them games we were missing exactly a final yeah. touch we dominated the possession in them mm. now if you yeah. tax his chance against this which you know when he's five yards out it's a, it's a, it's a different game and but like you see them two games we could have easily at least took a draw at least took a draw yeah the, the uh, it's weird to think that the the most impressive game so far, apart from obviously Southampton, just because we blitzed them apart, it's probably Coventry, just because of our resilience that we showed to be like, okay, we weren't the best team on the day. We had our moments, we we defended when we need to, and we were solid, and that's what sort of helped us sort of maybe now pick up these wins. It's like, okay, we're not just getting beaten. The people are finding a way through. We've we've sort of stopped what was causing us the the previous two games, and the. So I don't know about you, but even when we were tuning up against Southampton, I was a bit like, they yeah. get one back, like, it's going to go. Yeah. yeah. Last year, one the same type of thing, you know, two and three, two and the last time, get beat four, two, and we only took them to getting one, then the nerves start kicking in, and then, but, you know, to be fair. Well, that was the one you were saying, Dax foul with two nil. Suddenly they got yeah. a penalty in the yeah. back in the game. 
Yeah, well, this is it. But this is this is the essence of being a Sunderland fan, right? Biting your nails right. all the way up until the 89th minute, even when you're three nil up, because we've seen it all before. That's another <laughs> thing about not being in the Premier League. At least we're not biting our nails to the 110th minute. Or whatever <laughs> we're playing for the right. This you're gonna laugh. So I had a bet today. Little accumulate, not much. Um, Spurs, City, Villa, Brighton. And I don't want to. Who was it? Fulham. So at 90 minutes, four of them are winning and Tottenham are 1 0 down. So I'd only put a quid on. So it let me cash out for 70p. And I thought, oh, well, why not? The 1 0 down, they're not going to score two in added on time. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> 90 plus eight, they get one back. And I'm thinking, oh, well, it still doesn't matter. They're not going to get one. 90 plus 10, 2 1. It's <laughs> just like, oh, dear. <laughs> right, right. So welcome back to so welcome. Back. I mean, I, I've been doing all right recently. I've got myself up to like twenty, thirty quid, but it's still a punch in the gut when you you'd rather lose. Do you know what I mean? You'd rather just not cash out and just be like, oh, I lost, than take your money and then they go, ha, just kidding, we did win. I've done that loads of times, cashed out when I shouldn't have, and I should, I should take that feature off. You either win or lose that cash out feature. We have fortune over the years. Ah, it's just. I think that's that's the most recent one that's happened to me about that, and it was just you sort of you remember it. You never forget. I'll remember those five teams and where I was at that moment for years. Just to be like, okay, yeah. great. That's that's just what I needed. Um, hey ho! So on to on to is it Wednesday our next game? Blackburn. Blackburn yeah. beat Borough today, which isn't an achievement by this sort of standards of the of the season. I think even if you include, I think the last. Five or six games the last season. I think they'd only won one of them. So um Yeah. And they're they're sort of locked on points with us in the table. They're pretty much like last season where they were all sort of locked on points with us really at the end of the season. So what are you thinking? Um I think it's gonna be a I think it, it'll be an even game. You know, I think it'll be another battle like today. And I think if, if we if we play our game and not mm. not get sucked in like you know, first off today we kinda of got sucked into their Game plan a little bit more battling and what have you. I think if, if we play our football, we'll beat them. But again, that just all depends on who he picks, who's fit, you know, from the day. I mean, I think certain said he's certainly not going to be fit for, for Wednesday. I, Huggins, he took off at half time, but I'm not sure if it was for an injury or if it was tactical. So if, if he's injured now, who do you then put on left back? I might think it was tactical. Now that you mention it, because if you think they've got a gap in midfield, they didn't make any subs to sort of, you know, change their formation around or anything. I think they just went with, we'll just push our strike run and we'll just sort of sit in more compact. So I think we thought, well, if they've only got one up top, we only need three at the back with Hume, O'Nine and, and Ballard. And that's what gave us that extra bit with a bit like last season, we saw Barr and Diallo both playing almost next to each other. It gave us that thing, Barr and Diallo, Roberts and Diallo. And then today it was... <laughs> Bar and Roberts. I'll get there in the end, lads. Um, <laughs> they were sort of the, the the pair doing it. So I wonder if it was more a sort of thing of, do you know what? Let's risk it. Let's actually go at them. If they're going to sit in, let's at least give them an extra man to worry about rather than sitting four at the back still for one of their players. But you All don't right. know. Mike, Wednesday, what are you thinking? Uh, gutted that it is literally just all over the road. It's not far from me at all. Um, and I can't go to the game because she's inconveniently having a baby on that day. So. <laughs> Could so you not wait till the day after? Well, the doctor said it'd be in the morning, so I'm wondering if I can get the baby a ticket. At yeah, a year old. <laughs> but I think It'll it's a big fine. game, genuinely, because I mean I know we've said that on a few games where it's like make a statement game, but this is I think Blackburn's one of those teams that will be around that level where they're in the playoffs, if not mm. trying. If we can beat them, if we can beat them comfortably that sets us up to be a challenging team this season. I think that that's, I mean, because I've said that we can do better than playoffs this season with the talent we've got there. If we can have the confidence, we can go for second. We we could, there's not a team on there that makes me nervous, to be fair. No. You know, there's a lot of teams on there that I think, oh, that'll be a good game. But none of them are like when you're in the Premier League and you come up against like, uh, Liverpool, in when they're on a winning streak, you think, oh God, let's just hope we can not get embarrassed. Yeah, None of the it. teams do that to me. So I think if we could beat 
Blackburn, that's a massive statement to say. It should give all the lads confidence to say there's no team we can't take on in this league. Right. I mean, even last night, if you didn't have you watched Leicester Southampton, I mean, even though Leicester won 4 1, I wouldn't say they were outstanding. And they definitely leave gaps at the back, which we can exploit. So, you know, Leicester and Southampton, probably the two fancy teams wanted to go. Southampton have already been found out and this was a thing I don't know if you remember when Russell Martin was at MK Dons yeah they had a spell where they were like absolutely flying and and you know couldn't be beat free scoring they would concede a lot but they were free scoring as well and it was because all they do was press you a hundred percent just like absolutely go for you and it's what they did against us and yeah. Mowbray knew that and went right we'll keep bar up there and we'll burst out on them every time they they overcommit. And he did it again against Leicester. And it was like, you've just been exposed 5-0 yeah. by a, a sort of a team that I wouldn't say has had the best start, but we're a decent team, of course, you know, so you've just been absolutely demolished. So the thing you want to do now against a promotion rival is probably not to do the same exactly. thing. And he just went and did the same thing again. And he'd, he had this interview. I can't remember where it was still when he was at MK Dons and they sort of, they were asking him, I think the form must have stumbled. And they went, oh, so, you know, plan A doesn't work. What about plan B? And he just sort of sat there and went, no, plan B is to do plan A better. <laughs> and it was like, you, you, you can't overpress someone more than you already are. You're just going to just concede. Abs- but apparently he, he's just sticking to his guns a bit. So, hey, we'll, we'll see how they got on. But I, I think they'll probably stumble a bit now, Southampton. I think people have figured them out and well, it, it only took three game. games. Uh, only got, I mean, they've, they've considered the most already this season so far. They've considered 16. Yeah. So let's see how their fans are not stand for that. But, you know, what's your thoughts on Wednesday, Blackburn? Oh, it's, it's a bit of a weird one because I'm looking back to Blackburn from last season where we went there and I think we lost 2-0 and I, I think both goals were a bit of a... Was that offside? Did that do the yeah. end? But I think it was must have been like a similar time of year, September, October, where we were playing them. And I think it was one of those that just went, oh, we've just been beat, but we've had a good start, so it's not the end of the world. Again, thinking we're probably going to end up mid-table. You know, we actually did loads better. And then we beat them at home. And it, like Mike said, that's when you were like, that was a big moment when we beat them at home, sort of nicked it in the last minute off them. And it was like, all right, we're actually really going to have a challenge for this this season. And then we got rid of all our strikers and they all either injured or sold them all and pretty much tried to to do it as like shoestring as possible. But yeah. we did it. Um so, I mean, don't get me wrong, I will still sit here now and if Blackburn have a good game plan and play well, I'll take a point. I'm quite happy to sort of just keep us ticking over, just keep going. No one's running away with the league at the minute. We're, we're still quite early on. Like, Preston will stumble at some yeah, point. Yeah. The others yeah. have already stumbled as well. So, and we've we've stumbled at the start and we'll stumble again at points. But you would rather sort of go, do you know what, we'll take a point, we'll move on to whatever game's next, just let's keep building, let's keep building, then sort of thing. We threw everything at it just to try and get a statement win in September, just to yeah. sort of be like, right, we've we've got it. So I, I realise I haven't really committed within that answer. I've just said a lot of <laughs> sort of statements that really mean nothing. So um, I'm not going to Polit- do very, poli- very politician-like. Yeah, <laughs> it, was, it was. It's not what you get at the pub, so I'll just change it up a little bit. It's like, yeah, Blackburn. Shite, three nil. <laughs> you know, that's what that's what the fans want. <laughs> It'd be interesting to see the team he puts out against Blackburn, um, mm. with the fixtures being so close together. Um, that's always the fun thing in the lower leagues where you've got the midweek fixture all the time. So it'll be interesting to see who he plays and how much of a difference that makes. Mm. I think <laughs> those four signings. Sorry, Wayne. Those four signings that he's brought in. I know I think one of them is on a special programme because he had a big injury last season. But if nothing else, it helps our numbers and our rotation to sort of think, OK, Sirkin, he's, a, he's kind of our only left back, but Hume can play there. Huggins yeah. can play there. Elise can play there when he's injured. All right, well, what about right back? Well, you've got 9 You've still got Hume. You've still got Huggins. You've got Pembele now. You, you're sort of, OK. What about in the centre? Well, yeah, it's it's Ballard, Elise, it's 9 um, It's Triantis. I haven't seen a lot of him and... and Sealed. I haven't seen a lot of him either, but you've got depth in there. The weakest point is probably defensive mid because Corey Evans is nowhere near the team. And but mm. today it's showed that when you took our defensive mid out, we just switched it up and went right. We'll we'll pinpoint more through Pritchard and we'll let the other two sort of sit and flow. Do we know if Pembele is match ready? No, I think he's 
he's he hasn't played a game since March, and I think that mm. he's on this special program, and he's going to have a couple of games for the under twenty ones, I think, before he he chucks them in. I mean, I was I was surprised for to say Dave playing today. I, I wasn't expecting him being anywhere mm. either for a team. So, and I was actually really impressed with him when he came on. He looks a similar type of player to Clark. Um, I, I th- yeah, I said that. I think <laughs> I, I won't say how I phrased it in our, our group. <laughs> but I, saw, <laughs> I think I, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I think I put something a bit like um, he's a bit soft. Uh, like he went down a lot. Like if I've lost the ball, it must be a foul. That type of yeah. player. And it's like, and as Mike or Wayne, you correctly pointed out, you went Clark was like that at the start. And I was like, yeah, fair play. That's that's it's, that's true. <laughs> a lot of young kids coming through are like that because they watch and emulate these top level players. That mm. you know, it, it's a completely non contact sport when it's within the Premier League and stuff. So they mm. feel a slight brush and they're going down. It takes them a while to realise in the lower leagues, no, you can take a bit of a badge. You can step over that kick in, you know, you're more yeah. likely to score a goal than getting us a free that, kick in an awkward that, area. That was the bit as well. When towards, I think Hume did about two or three absolutely hard as nail challenges today. One of them at 90 minutes that he just full on didn't need to do. But I think he just went, I'm just going to boot the shit out of you because I've had enough of this game. And it was... You just love to see. I think you heard the crowds absolutely yeah. cheering it, and it's one of those that we all like. His James McLean one yeah, last yeah. year, like that, mm. I think just put him in like cult hero status. If it could have been anybody that you've absolutely floored, um, <laughs> I mean, do you think? Do you think he will change the team then? If we're, we're talking about it, I think he has. I think he has to rotate a bit. Mm. I think. I think he will. I think. You know. I mean, Pritchard. I think has definitely stated the claim. I mean, even. Even Dave, you know, he, he actually, you know, stated the claim. Will Roberts come back on the team now? He came on and, and played well. He didn't know. But the, the show do you leave out? Does would you drop Bar like for right. after that? Like, mm. does he give Toby a rest? You know, it's yeah, it's going to be very fitness orientated, isn't it? Because I'd have said Pritchard to start, but I don't think his plan was to play him for as long as he had played today. So, mm. is he going to be ready to start on Wednesday? Is the question. It seems first, to be serving one. us quite well that we've kept Pritchard in the end. So he seemed yeah. to, even when he came on, it wasn't that he was running them ragged. It was just that experienced head yeah. in the middle of our sort of strikers and our midfield. And it just seemed to really sort of be like, okay, we've got somebody who at least sort of will pick a smart pass out of this and sort of keep the ball. He'll play the clever ones. And I think he could have had about three or four assists at points for yeah. other chances that we'd missed or just little... Little passes here and there that was just like, yeah, he could have had a goal. no one else would have done that. He could have had yeah. a goal. He could have had a goal. I, and, I, uh... It was one of them that I think I'm forgiving him because I didn't care that Ballard was like r- literally on hand, just be like, that's my. Do you see how many hands went up for QPR, by the way? They were yeah. like offside. It's like, it's come off your keeper. It can't be offside. Like, he wasn't that far in front of him. Like, yeah. learn the rules. Cheap. Yeah, just play the game. I mean, you, you're clearly just playing wrestling at this point. <laughs> yeah. They're, they're like an, QPR is like an angry pub team. They really are. <laughs> well, that's just his style of football. Wigan was played the same way. It's just yeah. kicking. Also on Wednesday, Rosian might might be there as well because of his work. He might be in the, in the squad as well. So there's another option. I mean, the bench today looked really strong. Mm. For the first time this season, probably as well. I know you like before, and you're probably looking. You go one or two names, and now you're sitting there going, "Okay, there is there is a bit of depth here." And yeah, maybe if he's ready to go, we'll just go, do you know what? Let's throw him in. Just like we did with Bairstow. Just sort of go, there you go. You're going to play 60 minutes. Yeah. Let's see what you can do. And then we we sort of maybe give him Pritchard in behind him, depending on what type of forward he is. Because Bairstow seemed like quite a big lad. Yeah. So having Pritchard behind him probably worked. Whereas it might be better with Job in behind the, however you say this guy's name. Dave. Uh, Rush, Rushin. No, not that one. Oh, Rusin. Oh, Rusin. Rushin. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dave too. Oh. <laughs> Dave the second. Dave and Dave and Ukrainian Dave. Yeah. Um, Dave Ski. <laughs> oh, no. Anyway, hope you're enjoying our podcast, Philly. While you're sat in the back, not just thinking. That's where he said he was last time. Oh, I did say from Jack Shields, I'd read out his quote as well. Where was it? Uh, he said he's on a stag do at the moment, isn't he? And we was sort of yes. telling us he'd been uh, watching it. He went, so I was watching the game, celebrated Sky Sports news goal announcement, and then abused a lad with a mag top on. It's my favourite <laughs> sentence I've ever read on my phone. 
Just hope you're having fun, Jack, wherever you are, and, and keep that going. Do you think? Oh. Um, do you think at any point Mowbray looks at playing with the formation with these new players coming in? Have, have we got room to look at two up front at some point? Because three at the back seems to work for us when we need it. Well, I, I thought idea that he might have went to. I was. I thought he might have left burst to one and brought Emil on and gone two up front if it stayed one one. But I mean, I think his his press conference on Friday or Thursday, he did see it. He, as he, he sat in his office and looked on the board, and we've now got options to do that to change things around. So, if there's if there's certain games that need to up front, I, I think he would. I think it I like think. A, a club in general. If you play constantly the same formation with the same group of players, <laughs> Southampton scouts, scouts and teams, <laughs> scouts and other teams learn yeah. where your weaknesses are and how to break you down. So I think it is good, especially when we start playing some of the more challenging teams in the league, to then have options to mix that up. I remember this is again I've got such a weird memory for this. I remember us watching Sky Sports News years ago when we were playing Liverpool at home, the beach ball goal game. Oh yeah. Um, and they were talking before the game and all the pundits were like, well Sunderland are at home, it's Liverpool, they're gonna play four five one. That's just what they're gonna do. They're gonna play four five one. And Jeff Stellan was just laughing at him just going, Yeah, they're playing Benton Jones up front, the they're playing two strikers and it was it sort of caught Liverpool off guard that we were like, yeah. actually, yeah, you're coming to you, you're at our stadium, but we're not going to play defensive against you. We will still play our usual, you know, two strikers against you and make your defence work a bit. And it, it's like maybe we'll do that with Leicester. They'll come thinking, yeah. right? They'll they'll do the Southampton game. They'll wear us out. They'll burst out, and we go, no, actually, we we reckon we could actually tear your defence apart if we gave you a proper go for it. Do you think more it's that though? Would he? Is that the kind of thing he'd I mean, do? I never gave him credit for this before, before he was our manager. And I always used to think he was just a bitter old man. Um, but from, <laughs> it's from experience. When Roy, when we got promoted with Roy Keane and we beat West Brom away at the Hawthorns, he came out after the game and sort of slagged us off and basically said, yeah, well, they're not going to get promoted before us. Yeah. And it we was finished a bit like, game. yeah, well, and it's like, well, we finished first, mate, and you weren't even in the playoffs. Like, didn't, <laughs> what happened? And then he always seemed to be this bloke that never quite got out of the, division and it was always like that's his level and I always just thought bitter old man and then when he's come in now it's like your granddad's like you can't you're going to see your granddad at work and he loves everyone that's in there and he's just living for chocolate on a daily basis and like you're sitting there going this is, where's this guy been I would have thought this guy was a legend years ago if I'd have just done this that. I think he's actually very smart and he knows his tactics and he knows his formations and he knows his players more so than we give him credit for. I'm not saying he could compete against like Pep Guardiola mm. on that sort of level, but I don't think he's one of those that's just like a Steve Bruce of like, this is my team and this yeah. is what we play and this is it. And we might change it to a defensive mid and attacking mid. I think he's a bit more like, I've learned that the game's evolving and I'm evolving with it and sort of trying my hand at this because there's a difference between his West Brom team of, 2006 to Sunderland now. There's a completely different game of football out there, and he's still at this level. And most mm. managers will dip. Yeah, that was a long political answer again for you there. So <laughs> Mowbray, brilliant, amazing, another pipe. <laughs> That's what you answer. Thoughts? Well, you think to de approve that, I mean, half time, they went down with ten many changed, changed the formation to win the game, the Southampton game. Games. Normally, we were an attacking team, but we, were, we changed to counter attack against Southampton, worked a treat, so he seems to be doing... Mm. He's, not, he's not impervious to things going wrong. I think Ipswich actually like took note of what we did last season and sort of yeah. played us perfectly, so he's not like he can't be beaten. He's absolutely... He's thought of every scenario. It's just I do think he, he considers the team he's playing and sort of what would work best for us. But then teams will also come to us and go, right, this is what we think they're going to do and, and this is how you stop. You know, This is what happens when Roberts gets on the ball. This is what happens when Clark yeah. gets the ball. This is how you'll get your turnovers in midfield. Like, It's not that he's impervious to it at all. He feels like, to me, a long-term manager. And that's what I think the club's missed for a while. I mean, he massive, feels like massive that of, if it wasn't for our, our ownership, I will say. Yeah, yeah, that's the issue. But I do think you get managers in, and sometimes you get a manager in, and you think, 
yeah, we'll he'll see how he does for a season. And I don't feel like that with him. Like Grayson, when he came in, I was like, mm, you know, stuff. Like, when the manager comes in, it's like you, you you think, oh, well, you've got some about him. But with Mowbray, I feel like as long as the ownership backs him, he's a long-term manager. I've not had as much confidence since like the likes of Peter Reid and stuff like that, where, where we were still giving managers a chance. Not my favourite manager over the last 20 years. We won't go there, but... Uh, my favorite. Can I just manager. quickly say about? Oh, go on. I'll let you finish his favorite manager first. Go on. You, well, nobody will agree, but it was Coleman. I did, well, I did I, like Coleman. I, 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 loved, I loved Coleman for his passion. And I think he got stiffed by the changeover. Yeah, Ella Short shafted him, didn't he? I think. Mm. You know, I think once didn't didn't he make some kind of comments about not meeting Ella Short? And I thought that was Ella Short's parting shot. Right when I sat here before I sell the club, and I, I would look, I really really liked him. I would have loved him to stay and had another chance the season after because he's passion. Remember, yeah. we'll be, I, think, I think his first two game will be Burton. Burton. And he, he go on, and then the game was classic. Yeah. yeah. I, the, I, will, the, I still get the culture. It's on the documentary when Grayson is giving a motivational talk <laughs> yeah. of like oh. a positive mental attitude <laughs> while he's got like Dilabodji, Sudan, <laughs> Kone. Rodwell sat front and centre and he's like, you know, positive mental attitude guys, it transfers the way we play and onto the supporters. So, you know, if you can take that and it'll just make it all better, lads, you know, that and I'm sitting there going, Oh my Christ, no, we're <laughs> bottom. Like this is <laughs> hideous. Like what whereas at least with Coleman, I actually think if you gave him that same chance to talk to them, yeah. he'd get a couple of them on side. I was fully yeah. behind him, just like you say, yeah. stiffed. See, the, on, you, you mentioned on. the documentary, but Premier Passions, that was how you did halftime speech. Does anybody remember oh, the Premier Passions yeah. documentary with Peter Reid? Yeah. Oh, if, if you get a chance to see Premier Passions, it's when Sunderland went up with Peter Reid for the first time. Um, Is and it his, 90s, 5, 96? Yeah, his halftime speeches were, I mean, it, it's over 18s only, but it's just, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he could motivate with aggression. You get the chance. I'll finish. I'll finish with a Peter Reid story then because we, we timed to 40 yep. minutes or so and we're a little over. I went and saw, I don't know if you have used it, when Peter Reid, uh, Phillips and Michael Gray came up and did a talk at the Empire, I think it was a season or two ago, and he told this uh, amazing story of, um, is it Bobby, I always get the name wrong, Bobby Saxton or Sax. Mm. There you go. Yeah. Sorry. So it was just before my time, really. And he sort of went where we were playing Arsenal at home. Um, we're 1 0 up, really edgy game. You know, Vieira's having chances, Henri's having chances, you know, Perez, all of them. And like Peter Reed's out on the, you know, the edge of the tug, out screaming and shouting, going, ah, fuck it, yeah, yeah, get it again. Saxton sat back almost like he's got his feet up, like <laughs> not bothered, 70 minutes. It's fine. Not bothered at all. <laughs> Doesn't move. Stuff's going wrong. A player goes down injured. Peter Reid's doing all these changes. Turns around. 75 minutes. Saxton. Almost like reading the programme. Something like And he's just like, what the hell's going on? Like, we're one. So, 80 minutes. 85 minutes. Saxton doesn't move. Completely fine. You know, just, just chilling. Anyway, the game does end, if you remember. We do win 1-0. Amazing result at the start of the season, you know, we're, we're popping on. Anyway, they go up to the, the manager's room at the end and, and Saxton's sort of sitting there and they're pouring their drinks to each other because he loved to drink our Peter and he had a drinks cabinet in there. And he goes, you were a bit relaxed today. And he was just like, well, it was, it was in the bag, wasn't it? It was, it was perfectly fine. <laughs> so they switch on final score, Sky Sports anyway, and the scores come up. Saxton spits his drink out and goes, bloody hell, I thought we were 2-0 up. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliant! Christ. <laughs> what what a guy! I'd love to have just seen more of him. It was just like I say a little bit before my time. But anyway, we'll we'll pick up more funny stories next week when we when we return on extra time. But thank you for for joining us, Mike. It's been a pleasure having you to our political pub talk, shall we call it? Always, always, yeah. yeah. So, so Wayne, you want to sign off with anything for anybody? Oh, that's it. Thanks. I hope you enjoy the podcast. Hope you enjoy the show. Like I say, it's, uh, it's, always, it's a bit more relaxed, a good laugh. And uh, aye, we enjoy doing them. So I hope you enjoy them as well. Thanks for, for listening. Always. And keep an eye out on Thursday Night Live for the Thursday Night Live. Look, I'll let Wayne click the buttons this time so that it's uh, you've seen a bit behind the curtain here. So goodbye from all of us and we'll see you on, see you on Thursday. Bye.